said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us, for you, go rather to the dealer and buy for yourselves. Right? So, um, the foolish bride says, hey, give us some of your oil. Right? But they get refused. He said, I don't think so. Right? At first, it sounds like that, hey, that's not nice. Sharing is caring. <laughs> but what this is referring to is that our faith, our passion for Christ, right? It's not something that I can just give to somebody. You either have it or you don't. Right? I cannot just give you my faith. I cannot give you my passion for Christ. I can't give you my desire. You have to go figure that out on your own. Right? And God has also given us our talent and gifting for every single individual. Yes, 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 that is something that you devote to Christ on your own. Mm -hmm. I cannot give somebody my talent. I can't like, yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. It doesn't work that way. Right? So more importantly, why is it that these five foolish virgins could not go into the wedding feast? Right? It says, verse 11 and 12, it says, After the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Right? It's not the fact that whether you have oil or whether you can prepare oil or not, that is not what he's talking about, right? What Jesus is referring to is that, are you interested in me returning? If you are truly the bride, that's what you're looking for too. Oh my God, Amen. I can't stop thinking about my groom. Yeah, yeah. We are betrothed to each yes. other. We belong to each other. Amen. If you truly believe that, then you're just going to be looking forward to that day. Amen. Oh, I miss him so much. When is he coming back? What can I do? He is right? coming back. But if you are saying that, oh, he's delayed. God knows when he's coming. 
So I'll just go about my business. You know, I'll just go party with my girls and, you know, that's what he's talking about. Right? Having the form of godliness but denying its power. We might be having religious outer appearance of being holy and righteous and stuff like that. But deep down inside, God looks into our heart. Amen. 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 And in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, it says this, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. So the question is, how does the bride make herself ready? Right? Here's the thing. There is a time and a place for things. Right? When the groom appeared, the ones who were ready, who were preparing, went in. Right? It says here, but the wise says, since there will not be enough for us Go rather to the dealer and buy for yourself. Right? And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. So it's kind of like those foolish brides were like, they didn't care about the wedding. They were blaming the groom, saying, he's going to be late. No one knows when he's going to come. So I'm just going to go about living my life. And when the groom appeared, it's like, oh, snap, he's here. Where's the oil? Where's the oil? <laughs> right? yeah. Running around and busy, busy at the last moment and says, you know, nope. and then game over. Game it's over. too late. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Here's an interesting passage. This passage here is coming from Matthew chapter 25, right? This is the beginning. The first parable that comes in Matthew chapter 25 is the parable of the ten virgins, right? But if you turn chapter before, Matthew chapter 24, this is what it talks, it talks about, right? I'm going to read for you. Verse 36 to 42. If you have your Bible, you can open up to Matthew chapter 24. It says, but about the day or the hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Yes. As it was in the days of Noah, it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, yes. marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. Mm -hmm. Let me put it to you this way. People go on. I hear out of church leaders, pastors, talk about, we're living in end times. Look at what's happening around us. Even the people in this world think that, oh my God, look at what's happening. The end must be coming. Right? But the important thing is not about whether we're living in end times or whatever is happening. Even the, this world, secular world, has fascination with the end of the world. Yes. There are tons of post-apocalyptic movies out there. Mm -hmm. They have some definition of what will happen after this apocalypse, mm -hmm. right? Even within the church, the pastor might say, we're living in end times, Christ is coming back soon. But you must listen to the conclusion that they have. So, okay, end is coming, Christ is returning, then what, what, what must we do? Yes. How must we live? Right? And a lot of people say, hey, when Christ returns, before he returns, we're going to be lifted up. We're going to be raptured, and we're not going to go through the tribulation. That is meant for people who are pagans and Jews. <laughs> and we're going to be lifted up, so we're not going to go through this. So the Bible says the day and the time, and we don't know, even Jesus doesn't know, right? So the question that they're going to ask is, are you ready? 
right? And that is a very important question. Are you ready? Usually what they're referring to is that, are you saved? Have you repented for your sins? If Christ returns tomorrow, you know, will you be in heaven? Right? That's an important question. Amen. Right? But assuming that you are already saved, you're no longer in elementary school, yes, yes. Right? and you consider yourself a mature Christian, yeah. then you must look beyond that are you saved question. Yes. Yes. Amen. Right? How are you to prepare now yes. as a mature Christian for That's Christ's right. return? If somebody were to say, hey, we don't know the day and the time when Christ returned. He's going to come back like a thief in the night. So what are we going to do? I'm just going to go on about living my life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go eating, drinking, and marrying. Right? What is that talking about? It means that everyday life. I'm just going, going to go about my life because why the groom is delayed. I'm just going to go live my life. Why? Because when, mommy, why, why do I have to do that? Because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> they might consider that as a reason as to why or not. If they don't see the benefit of why, right? Yes, they're yes. not going to do it. Yes. Or they might do it directly for you, but here, why? Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Let's read this together. After this, I will say, there before you will see a great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne, before the land. They were wearing white robes and rolling on and hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to God, who sits on the throne and the Lamb. This is the vision of God. Amen. If you were to just summarize the entire Bible, what is God trying to do? He's trying to build the kingdom of God. This was the case from the very beginning in Genesis chapter 1. Yes. Right? In the Old Testament, the New Testament, that's what he was doing. He was trying to build the kingdom of God. Amen. Right? Amen. And then here, let's take a look here. Uh, once we do this, right? <laughs> It is because of the vision of God. That is what God desires from His creation. Right? And why? From our perspective, because this is our responsibility as a father. Right? It is not that we have to do this to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but we do this because we love Christ. Amen. 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 Because we are betrothed to Christ, Amen. because we belong to Christ, yeah. because we love Jesus, Amen. we do this as a response to the love that Christ has given us. Amen. And this is why. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Thank if you. this is not motivation for you, then you're not the bride of Christ. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. okay. yes. All right. Then the question is, how will we accomplish the Great Commission? 